This sound was recorded on September 3rd, 1962. Sitter Rose Creek, medium listed flint. From the night. Previously, my child, we have discussed various incarnations. Yes. And possibly the one most vivid at this moment and therefore more easily it will be for me to discuss further is this one in which Pompeii and Rome played such an important part in the time when you and your brother spent much time at Pompeii in searching for truth, when you were under the guidance of Pharos. But I would like to go a little further on the path when eventually your brother took unto himself a wife yes. who eventually bore him a son whose name was Tigellinus yes. Tigellinus became Amen. Eventually, the great spirit and great inquisitiveness, and was much given to the arts, and was most adventurous, and in consequence, did become one who traveled far and at the time when England was being overrun by Imperial Rome he was one of those who became high in office and he come in the capacity of one who had been given the command of many men and eventually became one of the builders of that city long since dead called the Lilavium this Tigellanus this incarnation of which I speak is the same as you now refer to as Brand. I know that you have for some time desired to know in what way this young man came into our group Yes, please. And it was your brother's son, whose name was Tigellanus, who, as I say, was an adventurous spirit and much gifted, and who, as indeed did all sons, high families, became high in office in the forces of Rome and was sent across the seas and became one of the beginners, as it were, of the English colonies, and was one who held high place in this country that you call Britain. Yes. I 
bring this into the story so that you shall have some idea of the importance and the association of this particular young man. It is not easy to grasp these things and I do not expect it should be easy for him to understand at this stage. Nevertheless, in these dim ages of which I speak, you are related. And so, in that time, he was your brother's son. Yes. And you took great interest in him in his childhood and watched over him with great compassion, great love, great interest. And it was a time of great sadness when he left Rome because you knew in your heart that you would never see him again. He was imbued with a lively spirit of adventure and caused some consternation in his childhood because he was always doing things which caused the mom concern. Not that he in himself was what you term a bad boy, but merely an adventurous one, inquisitive one. He became a very fine soldier. His heart was not fully in soldiering any more than it had been in his power. He was one who was interested in people, in discovering more about other countries. That's why, from the point of view of joining, as he had to, the armies and going across the seas, the spirit of adventure was the chief concern. The actual warfare did not appeal to him. But as all young men were trained in the arts of war, he was a second common thing and unduly did not concern him but his main interest was in discovering new peoples, understanding peoples and as I say he was one who was deeply interested in the arts and he was greatly interested in every aspect of life. He lived to be quite an elderly man as a matter of fact and was greatly loved in his old age in particular for the kindliness that he showed and the humanity that he gave out to the downtrodden peoples and the new regime of which he was representative under his influence became one of tolerance and the peoples respected him in the colony. It may well be that the link that he has, that is a very small one in the present, with this ancient town of Berlin, may be that this will ring for him some little remembrance that I got it. Davis was a young man of great courage, physical and spiritual courage, and he came under the influence of Christianity, and he became a Christian, but he never became a Christian in the sense of an avowed one from the point of view of proclaiming it, but in secret. He listened to many who had come from afar to proclaim their particular religious beliefs. And he had at the time more patience with many, although he was kind of himself. He did not feel drawn to the many 
many different gods and goddesses of ancient Rome. But in his heart, he received the Christian faith, which is possibly why in our incarnations he clung very closely to that faith. And even in this present incarnation, he became from early youth very drawn to Christian truths. And I think this is the moment when one should say that the basic Christian truths are in themselves great truths. But as we all know, much has transpired since those early days when men gave themselves completely to truth and sacrificed themselves in consequence on the altar of truth. The Tidulanus was in a very difficult position. He held high office. He was representing Rome in a foreign country. He was endeavoring to build and to build wisely and well and trying to bridge the gulf between his own peoples and the common peoples of Britain. And in consequence, he did wish to do nothing that would further the development of peace, which was very much in his heart. And he had become firmly convinced of the truth of Christianity, that he himself worshipped in silence. But oftentimes he would give shelter to those who came to proclaim truth, not necessarily all Christians, but people who had truth in their hearts, who knew truth, and though they had no perhaps particular religion, nevertheless their thoughts were noble, and oftentimes he shattered them. There was a great kindliness, a great humanity, and a great desire to bring the peoples together. And he was greatly regarded and respected, and he lived to be a very old man. And in the last few days, and I really mean months of his life, when he was very sick, he became The first truly Roman Christian in Britain. It is very difficult for me to make this clearly understandable to you. But I can only say that these links of which I speak are very strong, not only because of the strong ties of each incarnation, but because the lives have been so interwoven together through so many, many incarnations, have made us more than ever truly one spirit. Though we are a group, though we are individuals, we share that one spirit which is so tremendous in itself that animates us all, that links us together in such a way that we have become, as it were, one. And for those of you that are left on earth, you have some recognition of this, though you may not have the detail or the fact or support it. You sense and you feel it and you know that you are drawn and you know that you are linked in such a way that in a sense you are baffled and yet it is as natural to be attracted and to be fond of each other as you are because of these links of so long ago which have been so vital and so important one to the other. It is not an unnatural thing. It is the most natural thing of all 
that you should feel as you do feel about certain people, even when you do not quite know why it is there, because it is so part of you and part of the past. And this present moment is more important indeed than that which has transpired. For as I've said to you before, so many of you are now beginning to fit in the pieces and beginning to see the picture. And in consequence, you are fulfilling together the finishing touch, as it were, to this which was started so long ago that when you have fitted together all these things and all your lives are completed and you leave behind the earth forever, you will then realize how vital, how important all these aspects of life have been in all these different incarnations. This boy Bramwell, if you refer to him, is indeed an old soul. And I am convinced that in this present incarnation he is closing for himself the earthly chapter of life, as indeed are others so many to you. Chigilenus was truly a son of his father and truly one of the house because this house of which I speak, which goes back so far into the time when it first came into being, this family has always been a family of souls who have dwelt in harmony and in unity and in love and in peace, who have always sought to develop themselves on the highest possible level and in consequence to be of support and encouragement and upliftment to others less fortunate. And each one of you, in all your incarnations, have given out much that has been good. There have been incarnations, of course, where certain individuals in our group have not been so progressed and indeed there have been times when there have been certain souls who in themselves have fallen back but eventually through patient effort and struggling battling against their worst selves have overcome and in consequence have found their release and have found that which they have designed and sought for for so long. Those of us that are here have finished our earthly tasks in an earthly body. But those of you who yet remain are gradually fulfilling the tasks that have been sent you, each in his or her particular way according to his or her particular method and approach but fundamentally those of you that are left are all at the same level with the exception of three the three who have yet much to change themselves and have much yet to do will be shown the way they will fight the path and they will open out and blossom out and I am convinced that they will find for themselves that which they have yet to do I wish I could ask you the three one is he whom you call Albert, the other is she whom you call Queen, and the third is he whom you call Juan. Thank you, Mr. Child, 
as I said to you when I first came to speak unto you. There would be certain things that I should say that would baffle you, that would perplex you, and indeed possibly even certain things that for a time, though you accept me and leave me, you would still feel me inclined to doubt. This is only human. We therefore expect that you shall be at times uncertain. I only ask that you be patient. You will see more clearly exactly what I mean in regard to many things and many people. This soul that you refer to as Queen, she is fulfilling her destiny. She is, as it were, doing that which she has been meant to do. She is doing and has been in the past the task of love and of sacrifice. And she has fulfilled much that has been set her to do. The links that she has with the instrument, and indeed with yourself and with others linked to that group, are strong links. She has been given this opportunity in this life to give out in love and in service to various people. And this, I feel sure, is her task. And this is her way of redemption for past things. She is finding great happiness in giving. She's finding great happiness in giving freely in love and in service. And she has found in consequence great realization and great truth. And an inner peace. Though there are times when perhaps on the surface it seems that she is not at peace. Yet at the same time she is beginning to realize more fully that the links, not only with the instrument, but with others, these links that are so strong and are so old in time itself, they have all been essential and necessary. And the present incarnation is one which is in itself essential and necessary to her unfoldment. There are those whose task it is in life to serve, to be as it were the handmaids. There are those who are to take as it were high places and do great works. But those who do great works often depend on those who seem humble, Sometimes you seem even perhaps unnecessary. They are all important one to the other. There can be no greatness in any human soul unless there are those around who will support and encourage and help and make possible. How important it is to realize that often those who seem the most insignificant are as essential and necessary as those who seem most important. Christ was a great teacher, a great healer, a great spiritual leader, but he depended and needed his disciples. There were men of varying degree and varying types and were far from perfect, but he depended on the power that they gave and the love that flowed from their hearts. They were servants. So it is that we are all servants, all part of the plan. 
Some of us may seem lonely and hold back while others seem to forge ahead. The instrument is but the instrument. You are serving, you are doing your part, you are finishing your work. And there are those around you who are fulfilling their place. This boy Bran is fulfilling his place in the scheme of things. He is assisting in our work as the one assisted before him who when his tasks were finished came here. Tigellanius or Bran as you call him which said brought into the circle again, brought into the main stream of love and service and work. We are all important one to the other. We are all essential one to the other. While you are on earth, there may be certain aspects and certain things that may annoy or irritate, but they are but temporary, trivial things. The underlying spirit is the same. And where there is true love and true service and the desire for upliftment of others, to give yourself and dedicate yourself in love and in service, then all is well. You, my child, have given a great deal in many ages to others, but in the process of giving to others, you yourself have progressed in consequence. You gave great love to your brother in the time of which I spoke previously. And when your brother eventually took to himself a wife and you remained single, you devoted that same love to the son of your brother. And when your time came to be behind the earthly thing, from this side of life you continued to assist and to help where you could. Until such time as you were reborn again into a body to continue that which you had started so long ago. We have spoken about Lemurian and the Lemurians, how the beginnings of the house or the tribe or the family, call it what you will, its work began. And always this work has been one of loving service to humanity. As I've said, there have been members of the house, members of the family, individuals here and there who have transgressed and fallen away. But eventually they returned and they ennobled themselves in some measure and in some way some generation or other. This is life. This is the continuation of life. This is the unfoldment of the development of the human spirit. And the physical bodies are the shells of time, which are essential for the opportunities that they may be presented with to unfold further these things of the spirit, whereby the complete oneness of all concerned is such that the power that they generate is tremendous from the spheres of spirit. If you could see our spiritual dwelling place, if you could see the sphere or plane upon which we exist, if you could become fully conscious of it and see it with the eyes of the spirit as I see it, you would then realize how essential it was to have these incarnations so that you could grow in such a measure that you would be truly worthy to inherit it. For it has been a labor, a great love and sacrifice that has made possible such a condition of life in which we inherit and exist. And we on this side who are many who watch those few of you that are continuing the work of the Spirit on your side and finishing off, as it were, your education and your experience when that time comes for you to leave behind for the last time these things.
comes around. He will rejoice with us and you will see how necessary it was that you should have come back again. For you are doing a work which is helping many, each one of you, and the instrument I serve. We realize that his tasks will soon be over and that when his work is finished, there should be no returning. We have much yet that we must do before this takes place. But we should need, but we should all require from each one of you patience and all the love that you can give. We have much that we want to do. We want to do all we can as soon as it is possible to do it. When you were to visit Faros and the brothers Vetti, you were gathered together in a small box and you would have the visitation of the Spirit. You received great enlightenment, great spiritual wisdom, great upliftment in an age in which these things were greatly suppressed. You received tremendous enlightenment. himself eventually, as I told you, suffered the hard physical death, which now of course seems in a sense unimportant. But you continued, and your brother continued, and indeed I continued, to live to serve. The great pity was that you yourself who had this natural leadership were not allowed to develop it any further. Your brother became most apprehensive concerning yourself. This love that existed between you and your brother was such an intensity that though you both had this tremendous love of spiritual truth, I suppose with natural concern your mother felt that you were becoming too much affected by it and thought it wisest and best that you should not be encouraged. And so, for a time, you withdrew both of you from the inner circle of the group. And though you were still great friends with the Vettis and myself. We did not pursue, particularly after the death of Pharos, we did not pursue what you term communication. Though sometimes we would discuss this subject and discuss the truths that we'd found which had helped us all so much. But you were very much restricted in these things at this time, particularly after the death of Pharaoh, because it was felt unwise that you should be yours as a medium. And ever since then, strange as it may seem to you, you have never been a medium. And each of all has been highly sensitive, always been very much as it were in tune conscious of influences and thoughts emanating from our side. In other words, of course, you became what you term, I suppose, a form of mental medium, which in itself was a good thing, possibly, and certainly at that time it was probably a wise thing that 
you were not allowed to develop these gifts which were late and dawned within you, which had shown some sign of promise. But of course we were very concerned. When Pharos was not there to assist us with his wisdom and his knowledge of these things, we felt to some extent that we knew sufficient only to realize truth and aspects of truth, but we did not know sufficient about what you term mediumship or the controlling of it. And we were afeard that it might not be good for you to continue to develop as an instrument. Because Pharos had used you as an instrument and had shown us how powerful you could have been. Or indeed, he showed us how very powerful you were by his power and utilizing yours. Great manifestations were possible. And he often said that you could be an extraordinary medium. But of course you were very young. And as I say, your brother and I, for that matter, were concerned. We were afraid for you. Possibly you were right. At the same time, one cannot help but wonder, even as far back as ancient times as these, what might have happened if you'd been allowed to develop your powers. It is feasible and possible, of course. The great and dire consequences would have been brought to bear if it had been discovered that you were an instrument and were able to communicate. Because you must remember, these were dangerous times for these things, and we had to be extremely careful. Nevertheless, you lived and you saw your mother. You to the world of the sun, to you then, fine soul, who in himself was one of great spiritual integrity, and as I say, eventually became a confirmed Christian, but in the highest sense of the term. There was one that came to Verlamia, preaching the gospel of Christ who brought about his own destruction because of his abandonment and your brother's son tried to help him to escape indeed he did assist him in some parts but of course it was to no end for this man lost his life. And how strange it is that in this ancient city, which you go over and love him, which you believe to be the first Christian martyr, Albanus, who was a Roman soldier in the very legions that came from Tidulanus, all of this is so neat. With each one of you, yet your memories of it are dim, indeed you see not. But the instrument of whom I use came from this ancient place, in this present incarnation. And he was, in those childish years, drawn, greatly fascinated to ancient Verlamium, the same as he was fascinated and drawn to in this present incarnation to ancient Pompeii. The links over the centuries are strong. And there in ancient Verlamium, Tigellanius, Bramwell, and his existence. And in this present incarnation, the instrument I use lived for many years and was linked the ties are strong, my child. One cannot break these ties, even if one would. But here is a case, a clear case, of how each one of you have been linked and drawn and tied together through eons of time, through centuries, in varying ways. You, your brother, he whom you call Frederick, 
this boy to Jerez, the instrument that I use, oh, I think it was you, and you were there. And it would be as difficult for you to escape from the web as the innocent fly that is caught in the spiders. Mm -hmm. It can therefore be possible that if you struggled, or any one of you struggled, for all you were worth, you could not break this web of love, or it is a web of love, which has been built, in which you are all parts, not trapped, only if it is by love. Each one of you serving, each one of you playing an important part, in some lives more important than in others, in some instances, individuals of the group have been people of great importance, sometimes people of greater significance, and sometimes when they have been most insignificant, they have been most great, and when they have been most important, they have been most insignificant in the spiritual sense. We have all had to learn through many vicissitudes and many conditions, but above all we have learned to give out from ourselves love. We have learned truth, and in the seeking and the finding of truth we have suffered much. But in our suffering we have learned to feel and to suffer with others. We have become tolerant, we have become patient, and we have become truly children of God in consequence. Each one of you are vital, and there is not one of you that is not in some measure still fulfilling a mission or playing some part that is vital to the development of our history. But I think the time is fast drawing to a close when the remaining ones of earth shall finish their task. and shall be drawn into the realm of spirit to inherit that which they themselves make possible. There are still some years yet to go in which those who remain fulfill the pattern of the plan. I have spoken particularly tonight about this boy that you refer to in this incarnation as Bramwell, as I remember him and know of him as Tigilanus, because I feel it is something that you long to know, wanted to know, and you will find, and he too, which is important, perhaps more important, will find the key to this mystery. Long time ago, I believe, you asked repeatedly, in what way does this boy fit into this pattern? And always you were met with silence. The time was not ripe, but now it is, and he has come into the light light, only because it is the right moment and it is good for him and for the rest of you to know. And those others of whom I have spoken will be more fully revealed. There is one that disturbs me a little, because I feel that he is in himself a natural psychic. I feel that he has within himself the capacity of doing a great deal to bring enlightenment to others, but he has a lesson yet to learn, and that is to overcome himself, and 
I refer to Albert. He is an old soul, but in this present incarnation, he has allowed a certain aspect of his nature to cloud over his inner realization of things. But I think this is a stage in his life, present life, that will pass. I'm hoping at a later stage you'll become more interested in our work. But I would not desire that it should be pressed upon him. I want him to come to with himself because he has within himself great possibilities. And I feel that he is indeed, as indeed I do know, an old soul of great history linked with us by strong ties who has yet a part to play before he joins this side of life. I am hoping that very soon he will be drawn more into this. But we want it to come from himself. We do not want it in any way or to bear upon him. But I think that this will be well possible very shortly. And I will tell you next time possibly more about him and others. Thank you. Be patient. Yes. And as I've said, I do not expect yet that this will all make a clear picture in your mind. It cannot until I fill in more detail, which I will try to do. But those things that still cause some puzzlement to you, I hope to elucidate in various ways so that you have a clear knowledge, a clear understanding. Much, much, much that I want to say to you can only be said in stages. But we should have plenty of opportunities. So do not worry, child. I must go with my blessings be with you and with all our friends. Thank you. Please remember. Wonderful way of expressing that to me.